I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. I'm glad you joined me today. I believe I'm going to say some things that's going to instruct you and teach you in the ways of God and in the Word of God. But before uh, I get to my teaching, I want to sing a song called Father, We Praise You, and I want to read the scripture that I'm going to be singing. A lot of you already know it. But in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. David Ingalls wrote this song, Father, We Praise You, and it's a beautiful song, and I want to minister it to you now. If my people call by my name Will humble themselves and pray And will seek my faith Turn from their wicked way If my people call by my name Will humble themselves and pray I'll forgive their sin And heal their Father, forgive us for our sinfulness, forgive all we do confess.
we worship the Lord in his presence now. Stay tuned. I'll be right back after this short break. Her beautiful voice is unforgettable. Thou art welcome in this place. Her inspirational songs are timeless. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. For years, audiences have cherished the music of Jeannie Caldwell. From I'm a Believer to the anointing. It's the anointing that really makes it stand your ground in the Lord. Best Don't loved hits, hidden classics, all found on Genie, Colors, and The Peaceable Kingdom. CDs you'll treasure forever. Buy yours today wherever the products of Happy and Genie Caldwell are sold. talking about something today I bet you hadn't heard much about. <laughs> We're going to be teaching on the fact, uh, in fact we'll call this, are you a hypocrite? Boy that, you know, that kind of stings when you hear that word, hypocrite. Are there hypocrites in the church, you know? I've heard that there's more hypocrites in hell than there is, you know, in heaven because they're hypocrites. Well, we're going to talk about that today and find out, are you a hypocrite? I don't believe you are, but we're going to find out more about it. Now, there were four religions in the day that Jesus walked on this earth that he called hypocrites. And they are, number one, the Pharisees. Pharisees. That means to separate. Now, they believed and taught strict separation. They were zealous about the law and very legalistic, but they were held in high esteem by the people. They were fair, you see. Then there was the Sadducees, which means righteous. They were not as strict as the Pharisees. They added some of the Greeks' culture along with their beliefs. They did not believe in the supernatural power of God. They did not believe in the resurrection they were very wealthy Jews and very smart. But they did not have the same influence on the people as the Pharisees did. The Sadducees were sad, you see. <laughs> I learned those two little things one time, and uh, I never forgot it. The Pharisees are fair, you see. The Sadducees are sad, you see. Well, you can see why they don't believe in a resurrection. But anyway, the third religion of that day was the scribes. And we're going to read scriptures where he talked about you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. He called them hypocrites. Scribes, they were, in the beginning, like secretaries uh, to the king. They interpreted the scriptures to the people, which was very important. They wrote the word of God down. People looked to them and even called them rabbi or master. They held great sway over the people and they work closely with the Pharisees. You'd see the scribes and Pharisees a lot together. And then the fourth religion was the Herodians. They believe you could compromise with the world and serve God. They were not thought of as highly as the Pharisees or Sadducees, but they were a religion in those days. Now, the interesting thing about it is that these uh, four groups of people, these men, were the only ones that were upholding the Word of God at that time. Yet Jesus called them hypocrites and said, beware of them. And I think, you know, that is so strange. You, you wonder what the people thought, that they were teaching the words that are the only one that's teaching the Word of God. Yet Jesus comes along and says, beware of them. They're hypocrites. Now turn to Matthew 16, verse 6. 
Actually, the very first verse says, The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Then you go on down to verse, uh, he gives them, he tells them about them always looking for a sign. But verse 6 says, Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And the leaven there is would be corrupt bread. You know, you put leaven in bread and it would corrupt it like sourdough bread. But he was saying there's something wrong here. There's something wrong with this religious uh, group of people. Their doctrine is false. And uh, so he goes on to say, because when he said that, the disciples said, they reasoned among themselves and said, is it because we've taken no bread? When he said, uh, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Well, Jesus went on to tell them, no, I'm not talking about that. But verse 12 says, then they understood how he bade them not uh, beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That's what he was talking about. Be careful of what they're saying. This, they're, they, they have some uh, false teachings that you don't need to, to take hold of. Now, we as spirit-filled people, with the, hearing the Word all the time and being taught the Word of God, we have all kinds of uh, religious teachings and all kinds of religious doctrines, but we must beware that we don't become ourselves a hypocrite. Okay, what is a hypocrite? And where did the word hypocrite come from? Well, in Greek culture, the hypocrites were play actors of the day. It would be, in our day, what we would call movie stars, movie actors. What they would do is they would take a mask and hide behind them and speak with another voice so people would not recognize them. They pretended to be what they were not or who they were not. You know, if I were to come in here and put a mask, if I had a mask here and put it on my face and change my voice where it didn't sound like me, <laughs> you know, that's what they'd do. They would put on a play. They were actors, actually. And they called them, in the Greek, hypocrites. In fact, I looked this up in the dictionary, and the very first word for hypocrite in the Greek was actor. Uh, the second was one who affects virtues or qualities he does not have. And that's what a hypocrite will do. That is what the religious people uh, were doing in that time. And they were pretending to be what they were not. And so Jesus took that word, hypocrite, and applied it to the religious men of the day. People would understand what he was talking about because they understood Greek culture. And he said to them, you have the word of God, but all you have produced is hypocrisy because you're pretending to be what you are not. And, you know, we, we see that in, in our day and time. We see people that are one way at church. They, they have their mask on at church and talk a certain way, you know, bless you, brother, and then go home and act another way, completely different in another setting than they are when they're at church. They are actually uh, hypocrites. If it's, now there's, you know, we, we all also want to be careful that we just don't come in dragging all the cares and the weights and, uh, you know, someone say, how are you doing? Well, let me just, you got an hour and I'll tell you about it. You know, we're not talking about that, but we're talking about being honest. We're not talking about appearing to be so super spiritual, yet what you really are is a hypocrite. Now, sinners cannot be a hypocrite. Only Christians can. So we do need to watch that. Now, we have two sides. We have an inside and we have an outside. The inside is our spirit man. The outside is our flesh man. People only see the outside. They don't see the inside. And uh, it's all, the outside's all wrapped up in clothes. You know, we got fancy clothes, fancy hairdos. We have uh, jewelry. We have homes. Flamboyant personality, charismatic personality. Have charismatic uh, personality actually rather than character. 
but people will get all wrapped up in the outside, not considering the inside, what is really in there. Sometimes they don't know until they get real close to that person and uh, spend more time with them, then they realize they aren't what they're supposing to be or appearing to be. They're actually a hypocrite. Now, uh, Matthew 15, uh, verse 19, uh, Jesus said, well, actually, let's go on over to uh, starting with verse number one. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but he, it says, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were in Jerusalem. They asked him questions. They said, Why do ye transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? Jesus asked them that. He asked them that. Why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? He was bringing, he was the living word, and they were uh, coming against him at every turn. In verse 7, he said, um, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah the prophet said of you, This people um, draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Now there are, God does have commandments that are good commandments that we can follow, but there are also traditions of men that make the word of God, Jesus said, of no effect, of no effect. And so we need to make sure that we are lining up inside as well as outside. Uh, now, God requires more than acting right or appearing to be spiritual. He wants us to go beyond that, to be changed on the inside. Now, Matthew 15, 7 and 8, I just read that, where it says, Ye are hypocrites. They were doing and saying the right things, but their heart was far from them. I have seen that as a pastor's wife so many times. Every pastor's wife knows what I'm talking about. I mean, it's, it's the people sometimes that seem to be the most spiritual are the ones that have got a lot of sin in their life. Now, that's not always the case, so don't start picking out certain people in your church you know of. But I have known of people who get up, you know, and they sing unto the Lord, or they rejoice, they raise their hands, they're praising and worshiping God, and we might have just had them in the office talking to them about this adulterous lifestyle they were living. You know, I remember years ago there was a, a lady that actually committed two she had two affairs in this church before we asked her to leave. And we did ask her to leave. She broke up one family and was about to break up another when we got word of it. And it's hard to ask someone to leave. We tried ministering to her and praying with her, but she wouldn't correct herself. She told me, she said, well, Sister Jeannie, I have peace. And I said, well, my Lord have mercy. If you've got peace and you're committing adultery and breaking up families, you've got problems. You have hardened your heart to sin. But she would get out and dance unto the Lord. You know, she would get out in the aisle and dance before the Lord and wave her hands and worship God, and everyone thought she was very spiritual. But she was not. That was a hypocritical uh, act, actually. She was a, a hypocrite. And uh, we loved her, but we could not allow her to stay in the church and wreck any more families if she wasn't going to purge those things, as I said last week, out of her life. You have to purge those things out. You have to get your heart right with God. Second Chronicles 16, 9, you can look it up. It said, God is looking for those to show himself strong to, those whose heart is perfect toward him. He wants our hearts perfect toward him. That's what he'd rather have, our hearts perfect toward him. I heard Brother Hagin say one time that God is not going to uh, deal with us so much or, or talk, you know, reward us so much when we get to heaven on what we did in the flesh, but what we did in the spirit. What we do in the spirit is what's counting in heaven. And he doesn't want us, of course, in sin, but he cares about what we do, our assignment on this earth. It says, with the heart man believes, not with the mouth. We make a confession of faith with our mouth, but your heart has got to believe. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. He is the Son of God, and he died for you so that you may have everlasting life. 
Now, when you say these words, when you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and you accept him into your heart, say, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior, you will become born again. He will come in. And so then your heart, see, will be changed and it'll be toward Jesus. It'll not be like the world, like the devil anymore. And you have to begin to work on yourself to be all that he wants you to be. Second Chronicles 25, 2, talking of Amaziah, it said he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Then David did wrong in the sight of the Lord, but his heart was toward God. Two different stories all together, two different men all together. And David, I thought, let's turn to Psalms 51. This is when he wrote uh, uh, the Psalms 51.10. It's when he had sinned against the Lord in his heart. He was so sorry. You know, it said that he was a man after God's own heart. It's what the Word says. But his, the first verse says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. In verse 10, you go on down to verse 10, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Now see, these are the things that God loves. Verse uh, 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou will not despise. And he won't. When you humble yourself, as I sang at the beginning of the program, humble yourself before God. When you uh, ask him to forgive you where you've failed and where you need to, to be forgiven, he will forgive you. He's just a loving God, and he wants to do that, and he loves a spirit that's broken and contrite before him. That is what he loves. Proverbs four twenty three says, You must keep your heart with all diligence. Let's turn there real quickly to Proverbs four twenty three. This is the, the scripture we love to read where it says, My son, intend to my words, incline thine ear into my sayings, don't let them depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health. There's a prescription for health right there, health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. That keep there in the uh, Hebrew means guard. Guard your heart like a prison would guard a gate. So you guard your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So we need to know if we will guard our heart, keep our heart pure before God, then he will keep us in health, give us joy, give us peace, minister to us by his spirit every day. Now, how do you know if you're believing in your heart? An example of that would be you hear the scriptures on uh, prosperity and you confess and confess and confess and believe that you are prosperous in Jesus' name, but you really don't believe it. You really do not believe it. You, you confess all of the scriptures that have to do with prosperity and you don't prosper. Why? You really don't believe it. No word... Uh, comes out of your mouth when a calamity comes. Now, you know, I know a lady that was uh, confessing healing scriptures, and she had it in her heart. She had, she needed healing, and she was confessing healing, and she was in an accident, and the first thing out of her mouth was not fear, but the Word of God. So if you can, uh, in, a, in a calamity, still believe the Word, still have faith, still be strong in faith, then you are believing in your heart. I know when I was in that accident uh, almost 10 years ago, was 10 years ago in October, um, I believed God. I believed that He would heal me because I believed His Word. 
And so I stood on it. I did not waver. It wasn't an act of a gift of faith. It was faith in His Word because I believe God. And because I believe God, then I was healed. Through a process of time, my back totally healed, quickly actually, in 30 days. And so God, uh, when calamity comes, if the Word of God comes out of your mouth, faith comes out of your mouth, joy comes out of your mouth, the Word comes out of your mouth, then you are, in fact, believing with your heart. If fear comes, and fear will try to come from time to time, but I will say this, I will honestly say this because I've walked in it, if fear comes, I don't really believe that you're believing with all your heart. I think there's a little edge of doubt there, a little bit of, of doubt. So get the doubt out, get the fear out, and get your faith alive. Get a hold of His promises, hold on to them, and know that He wants to do you well, He wants to do right by you, heal you, deliver you, prosper you, and make you ever with whole. So don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a person that puts a mask over your face and you're one way at church and you're another way at home. You're not what you're pretending to be. Be what God wants you to be. And I'm telling you, you'll know joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Take a look in your uh, Bible of all the scriptures on hypocrisy and hypocrites and you'll learn a lesson, I'm telling you. I want you to know I love you and Jesus loves you. Always remember, in His presence is fullness of joy. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email her at Jeannie Caldwell at VTNTV.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet in His presence.